economists often say, oh, this is economic history, it's not relevant. This is like long time ago. Why should something that happened 150 years ago be relevant to today? To that I answer is that at least I know what happened 150 years ago, whereas you don't really know what happened five years ago. And I think we often also don't think very carefully about differences across industries in contemporary settings. People like to take a result from one industry and use it to inform policy in another setting. We need to be more careful about that. And economic history allows us to do precisely that. I'm Petra Moser. I am a professor at NYU. And I study creativity and innovation. History is both informative and it's also very accessible. So one thing that you can do when you teach in a historical context is you can connect much more easily the policy experience to historical figures. I started my research by looking at the effects of patent laws, which is the most obvious type of intellectual property right that people typically study. What I found there is that one needs other types of data than patents to study the effects of patent law on innovation. I created alternative data based on exhibits that inventors showed at world fairs of the 19th century. So you want to think about really big events where people from all across the world came and produced and showed their innovations. And we can then use that to examine differences in innovation across countries and over time. I have found that very strong intellectual property rights in innovation or creativity typically don't help. But basic protection appears to encourage innovators and creative individuals to produce more and better work. One of the big things that can happen is that a country adopts a patent system or a country that did not enforce patent laws starts to enforce patent laws. Or a country that did not have copyrights starts either implementing or enforcing these types of copyrights. One of the things that I've looked at is what happens to innovation when a country adopts a patent system. One of the things that I found there is that when a country adopts a patent system, it may not only affect the level of innovations, but also the type of innovations that a country produces. Inventors depend more on patent protection in some industries than in others. When you don't have a patent system, a lot of innovation tends to go towards areas where you don't need patent protection. Say, for example, Switzerland and Denmark in the 19th century, they were innovative. They were just as innovative as countries that did have patent laws. But their innovations were narrowly focused on a small set of industries where inventors did not need patent protection. Italy is an interesting case because Italy had a lot of changes in the law in the 19th century as part of a political process. In Italy, it was the result of the timing of Napoleon's military victories relative to the passage of the Code Civil in France. Parts of Italy where Napoleon was successful before the passage of the Code Civil adopted French copyright laws. The other parts of Italy where Napoleon was successful and invaded Italy after the passage of the Code Civil did not get copyright. They got everything else. They got the Napoleonic army, they got the code, they got the reforms that came with them but they did not get copyrights. Now we have two sets of states, one set of states that has copyrights and another set of states that doesn't have copyrights. And in that setting, we can now examine what happens when a region, or a country in this case, gets copyright. When composers have access to basic copyright protection, they produce better and more operas. So we see that as a, as a measure of creativity. There are more and more studies of copyright where we really need more evidence because it is a topic of exceptional policy relevance because with the digitization of content, 
systems that help us create more content become extremely important. And we cannot use research on patents to help guide policy on copyrights because it's a completely different animal. Copyrights are much more narrow than patents. And they're extremely long-lived today. So we need to understand different things about these types of intellectual property rights. There's a big, big literature on patents, but very little on copyright, and, and that part needs to grow. Economic history can contribute to this research because we just know a lot more with hindsight about the settings in which policy changes take place. We can think more carefully about factors that may that may interfere with our with observing the effects of a policy change on innovation.